people have mixed feelings about the multi-enemy fights in these games. Uh, so they're controversial for some people. I'm kind of cool with them. I'm not- I'm not mad they're in the game. Especially since a lot of them are optional, the multi-enemy targets. Either that or they're in fights against two very different enemies instead of just a one guy repeating. And I do kind of prefer the two different enemies over two of the same enemy. But oftentimes they're dope when they double up, they're doubling up on an enemy that wasn't that tough to begin with. I got- I, I also kind of have mixed feelings though, where like, I... I enjoy them, I think. And they're fine. I don't detest them being in the game, but I also will st will also support the argument that they're not necessarily fair in many cases. Like, I don't think that's incorrect either. Uh... Because they're not really fair at times, and sometimes how well you do at a multi-enemy fight in some of these games isn't entirely due to your personal crowd control, but also the enemy's AI. Because fighting one enemy's AI isn't the biggest deal ever, because what you're doing is you're largely reacting to what they're doing. They have patterns, they have moves, they have tells, and you can respond to their tells. So, the fact that they do different attacks in seemingly random order isn't necessarily a big deal, because they're getting your full attention. But two enemies, or three enemies, or four enemies, and so on, all doing their different attacks at different timings, and it quickly becomes incomprehensible. And also, the fight will be easier or harder at times based on which attacks they do. And that's something that's largely out of the, out of the player's control, and even awareness at times, is that, like, when you're fighting two enemies at once, and you're at the mercy of the just the utter chaos of their behavior at times, uh, how hard the fight turns out to be can really depend on whether or not there's the, the, there's often just certain attacks they can do that make the fight way harder and certain fights attacks they can do that don't really make the fight that much harder and uh whether that like what's happening with that is like totally up in the air like if both of them were slowly chasing me around and kind of trying to claw at me and stuff like that the fight would be way more manageable than it is when one of them is beating me up while the other one simultaneously hits me with projectiles, or sometimes what's even worse is when both of them are shooting projectiles at the same time, and they have a, they have like three or four different projectiles between the two of them, and they're both doing them at the same time, and it's like, dude, chill. Please. Calm your- just calm down. This is out of what- out of the range of what is and is and isn't reasonable. Like, that's when I started just laughing during some of those deaths I was having, or or just when it looks like I was gonna die, and I was just kind of, like, giggling to myself, because I was just watching the scenario just become absurd. As, like, I got hit by, like, like, the, I would get slow- I would get stunned by the slowly spreading ground pool of lightning, then hit by a torrent of lightning, or the shock wave that knocks you back, while also then getting hit by the spirit, like the, the Kamehameha of lightning that hits you in the face as a giant ball, and I'm like, I'm like, dude! Like, all this is happening while I'm still stunned and unable to respond, and it's like, it's pretty fucking nuts. Whereas one Sanctuary Guardian is not even vaguely capable of approaching that kind of chaos. It is exclusively something that happens when there's two. Some some different similar stuff happens like the Ruin Sentinels can be this completely chaotic fight where in Dark Souls 2 you fight three of an enemy at the same time and they're all largely identical I believe or vaguely so but they have like some of them have like spinning attacks where they can cover like practically the arena and can and it's you can't you can't dodge the spinning attack because there's it's a continuous spin so dodging one attack gets you hit by the other ones and you can't block it because it'll immediately overpower how much ability you have for blocking so the only real option is to run away from it and it completely dominates a chunk of the level when it's happening but at the same time uh you'll be you'll have to deal with the fact that like when there's three of like when there's one of them it's like oh that's the fight that I, that's the attack i run away from okay but when there's three of them, what do you do when they're all doing it? Or they're taking turns doing it, and it just becomes total chaos. Uh, there's tricks you can use that kind of manage some of these fights. And I'm sure that speedrunner lunatics have like fully mastered them indefinitely or some nonsense. But I think that the, the vast majority of players will kind of get stuck in traps with some of these fights where you can be put in an unwinnable situation 
when crazy nonsense just starts happening and things just become unwinnable. And I would probably argue that that kind of content's probably not the best on some objective level when that stuff's going on. But at the same time, I do kind of just enjoy the memory of of, you know, facing down against these crazy scenarios and beating them and the satisfaction. Usually the saving grace of sorts is just that while difficult, those scenarios usually aren't punishing enough to completely sour the experience. So even if you have some seemingly unfair deaths and struggle for a bit, usually those are not the fights that take up a whole day of my time and I'm just suffering. And that's probably why I hate the frigid outskirts so much, is that fighting those two cats at the end of a, a zone that I hate and not, like, makes it way harder. Like, I'm, I'll, I'll tolerate having to fight two sanctuary guardians way more, specifically because you fight them right next- you read- you, you, they're sandwiched between two separate bonfires, it's almost a joke that they're between two separate bonfires and both of those bonfires uh, have no enemies around them. So you can just casually just keep facing off against the sanctuary guardians on loop until you beat them with no other, no other things in your way. The only real annoyance or stakes being uh, whether or not you have souls to lose as a result of the fight if you walked into them with them like, like I did. But overall, like, the, the context of the fight can definitely make it more or less frustrating. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I'll always remember fighting Alana in Dark Souls 2. And I didn't know about the secret bonfire that was way closer to the, to the fight. So, like, it was a huge track to the fight every single time. And she's such a chaotic fight of, like, a huge pool of moves to randomize through. And the ability to summon additional people to fight you with. And, like, so many problems to deal with. Let there be light. Spooky noises are happening. Oh, wait. This is the... I think I remember what this is. There it is. And yes, I have noticed the comments pointing out that I forgot about this helm throughout the entirety of the Tomb of Giants. I should have remembered it, but and I've I've read I remember reading about it years ago that it's an option, but I've never done Tomb of Giants after Isolith, so it's never been an option for me, so I didn't even consider it. The silver pendant. Oh, that's a super important item. Bye bye. But yeah, Alana was so it's a cool fight in many ways, but Alana's so brutal to learn. But I think the larger the move set, especially if those moves are, are actually consistently dangerous, the larger and more varied a move set for a boss is, on top of being aggressive and dangerous and everything, just the more just incredibly challenging it can be to learn said fight and defeat it. And uh, Alana might have had one of the longest learning curves of a boss fight for me. Especially for a boss fight that's not multi-phase. Because that's usually the other thing that really gets really brutal is a fight that's multi-phase. Because when a fight's multi-phase, then you have to learn how to defeat multiple boss fights, essentially. Not multiple enemies at once, but an enemy that becomes different enemies over the course of the fight due to having completely different movesets. Or even having a state change where it changes in appearance or size or adds additional fire effects to its attacks or AoEs or stuff like that. Which is why Fume Knight can be so brutal, is because it's a significant phase change. And Ludwig's a phase change, and I'm 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 forgetting the fight right now, but uh, the DLC the 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 uh, DLC boss fight from Dark Souls Three is a three phase boss fight, and that's like that's next level shit right there. I'm like your chain looks suspiciously hidden, almost as if you're trying to hide something from me, sir. There you go. It's really satisfying to stun an enemy. By having attacks that actually stun people. From having a giant ass weapon. Alright, so getting that pendant was important. I'm, gl I'm glad I got that. 
It's one of the important things that I knew I had to get, but I did not necessarily remember where it was. And I wandered right over to it. Hey. How's it going? Hey, buddy. Oop. I might even argue that multi-enemy boss fights, where you fight multiple copies of the same enemy, might even be the strongest case the, game's ha the game has for the idea of moments where you're supposed to summon. Ah! Plenty of people will argue never summon and all that, but I think that the top times to summon in all of Dark Souls are probably times where you fight two copies of a, of a boss at once. Where it's like you have to work together to t team up on the enemy, because the enemy itself is, is working together to team up on you. And also the three DLC zone, the gauntlet DLC zones of Dark Souls 2. Because all, all three expansions for Dark Souls 2 have two main boss fights that are in a continuous cool zone, and I like those zones a lot. But all three of those zones have one weird side area that's like the gauntlet, that is just... Constant enemy spam, completely chaotic environment, incomprehensible, incompre incomprehensible place to navigate, and then a boss fight at the end that is in invariably a repeat of some kind. First boss fight was three NPC invaders. Second boss fight was fume uh, smelter demon, but recolored and slightly changed on its timings and so on. And then the third boss fight was a boss fight from the same DLC, but two of it. And between the between the sheer aggressiveness and difficulty of the zone, and the uh, boss fights themselves and how they're set up, I would say that those zones are actually designed for multiplayer specifically, which is suggested by the fact that each zone opens with a little summoning, like a dedicated summoning area where not only can you summon people, and there's like a specific sp spot that that's clearly set up for it. But they even suggest that you- they even allow you to summon people that are, don't even have the DLC into those zones. That's how- that's how substantial the, uh, the summoning is. Is that people who don't own the DLC can play those gauntlet areas if they're helping somebody who, who owns the DLC. Like, that's- that's some next level effort to, to help people co-op those zones. Making it a pretty clear example to me that that's actually the d developer's intention. And so if you play those zones solo, I think you're essentially doing a challenge run. No matter how much you think you shouldn't summon in a Dark Souls game, I think it's just clearly their goal. And yeah, here I am getting super off topic again. Not that off topic, it's all tangentially related topics to the original topic of the multi-enemy boss fight we did. Why do I ever listen to you? Hey guys, would you like to aggro like single file? Single, si single file. Wow, it's working. <laughs> what? I was joking. Single file. Single, single file. Uh, almost made it. I was gonna say, y'all are being so polite. You can definitely notice the difference between when they're attacking and when I'm not. When they're attacking me, they die instantly from my attack. And when they're not attacking me, then I have to hit them again. It's a whole thing. You can definitely just notice the, 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 the difference between the two. And that's the, ma that's the magic of counterattack damage. Thing where you do more damage if you hit somebody who's currently in the process of trying to hit you. Get yourself a high a weapon with high counterattack damage, and the effect becomes even more pronounced. But they're usually thrusting weapons like a spear or a rapier. Then you get the old legal ring from Ornstein, and suddenly you're multiplying that effect even larger. And suddenly your whole build is about hitting people while they're attacking, which is not what you could do consciously if you want to. But just but just having it passively around, you'll unconsciously hit people while they're attacking pretty often because they tend to be attacking you in in many situations. And particularly boss fights. So, like, I, I, I kind of view counterattack builds as being like the anti boss build to an extent. 
because they're just so effective at increasing your damage against boss fights. The reason being that boss fights are boss fights are constantly attacking you. Oh, there it is. Boss fights are constantly attacking you at all times, and their attacks are very long. So if you dodge an attack and hit them while they're attacking, then you get all that counterattack damage. I find that you don't even have to think about counterattack damage during boss fights because it just will happen basically automatically all the time during the boss fight. You'll just be consistently doing like incredibly, incredibly larger amounts of damage with your weapon than normal. To the point where I get comments on my Dark Souls 2 series with people just asking me like, what the fuck, why are you doing so much damage? And then I have to do the, give this whole tutorial to those people each time. You laughing at me? You laughing at me? You laughing at me? You shouldn't laugh at people, sir. It's not very nice. You shouldn't laugh at people at all. There we go. Laughing at me, Mr. Ulysseal, with your weird trigger phobia head. Rest key. Is it trigophobia? Is trigophobia the thing where people are afraid of, like, a thing covered in holes? That's clearly what they're going for with these things. The bent crest key. The grooves of the crest are enchanted. The door is sealed with a powerful spell. Is that what opens the door that I couldn't open earlier? I think it is. I think that's the right spot. The pen- yeah, the pendant's in here because it's usable. Silver pendant deflects dark. Engraved to the crest of Artorius, one of the ancient treasures of Anorlando, presents to, presented to Artorius for facing the abyss, effectively deflects the dark of the abyss, especially in its magic forms. Uh, I don't need the, bina the binoculars equipped. There we go. Join. That's fun. That's fun. I should have been already equipping that because I, I should be practicing it a little bit against some of these other enemies. Ow! Your giant club arms give you so much range. Ow. I think these guys were the inspiration for the Cloverfield monsters in Dark Souls 2 and the No Man's Wharf and so on. Because they clearly have the same, like, hunchback and incredibly monstrous mega arms and so on. The end result, because, uh, and like these are abyss monsters, abyss being the darkness and everything like that. They start off looking like this, I can almost imagine that maybe these things evolved into those things, like, with the abyss they became more and more almost like reptilian looking and smooth featured and just covered in dark skin, as opposed to the, these things which look like villagers that have been morphed by a parasite on their head or something. I can imagine they could they could have just kept changing and changing until they became those creatures, which coincidentally look like the monster from Cloverfield. Uh, but they might have... Huh? Did not realize what I was stepping... Ah! I did not realize what I was stepping into, and I was not ready for that uh, ladder to just drop me without giving me a prompt. Whoops. Is there a reason to cut you? I don't remember if this is one of those things you're supposed to cut. Or if I already- it looks like I already might have if, if it is. <clears throat> uh, I gotta double check, was there a place here to go? You can drop down onto that roof, but I don't know if you, you can go anywhere else from there. Oh yeah, if you dropped off that roof you'd end up outside. But I've already have access to the outside from the other path I have. So let's take the normal way back and just see if I miss anything. I was wondering why we we're able to survive with the sunlight maggot on our head. But I assume it's basically because we... Well, we killed it, and it's just that its body happens to continue to glow, is I think, is I think more or less the point? Hey there.
This DLC is way smaller than I remember. Can I just say that? There we go. We've established the shortcut. Uh, all of them re ragdolled up there. They were all standing up and died again. Don't want to use the bonfire yet because guys will respawn. I saw the item on that ledge and I want to go get it if I can. I don't think it's even hard to get to. I, th I just missed it. But before I made any other mistakes, I wanted to establish that shortcut. Because uh, if we don't, then I have to do this whole zone again if I die. Ah, it's just this. The soul of a hero. Alright. Yeah, I, th I think the I think the key we got might open up the, the door we saw earlier. It all matches up. They give me access to this key, and then there's a thing that takes me back to the previous bonfire. Both giving me the ability to skip past everything I've played so far so as a proper shortcut, and also giving me the chance to use said key by sending me back. This DLC's... So much shorter than I remember. That happens a lot in Dark Souls, though. I think it's usually a good thing. Everyone's back. And my health's a little longer again. I think it's usually a good thing when, uh... When a game like Dark Souls or Portal or something like that is... Something that you play again years later, and you're like, that's shorter than I remember. I think when a game's shorter than you remember, I think that you, that usually means that it's well-paced and doesn't waste your time. Whereas if a game's longer, if, if a game's not shorter than you remember, it might have padding elements and grinding or some kind of time wasty stuff kind of built into the main campaign that you unavoidably have to redo every time, making it longer, and your player knowledge doesn't make the game any shorter, and that's just the whole thing you have to deal with, unfortunately. Solid mask, so she has like this really pointy, curved, embroidered hood. A fake eye in the middle of her face. Heavy armor that looks very similar to Artorias's in some of the design concepts. But then she has a physical white mask over her face. So she has a similar design overall to Artorias, but she does not feature the open, gaping hood that looked made, that made uh, Artorias look like they were like the ghost of, of Christmas death. Or, I mean, oh, Ghost of Christmas Future, aka Death, basically. I think that's Artorias' hair? Because he had like a ponytail coming out of his helmet. I think she took his hair and left that at the grave with the flower. They cared about these people. There was a... Gwyn had like, I think it was four knights. And I think she, I think she was one of them. I forget her name. The lack of saying it out loud definitely doesn't help me remember it. Uh, but she's one of the knights, I believe. Then it's Artorias. And then there's uh, Ornstein. And you'd almost expect to, that the last one would be Smo, just to fill it, fill it out, but no. There's a fourth character that... Oh, wait, is it you? I don't remember if it's you that's one... This guy right up here that's the one of the knights of, of, uh, of Gwyn, or if it's a character we never met. It might be a character we never, we never meet. But Ornstein just happened to be the executioner. He's actually not one of the knights at all. He's also kind of a monster that eats people. Yeah, okay, the crest key does go here. How are you doing? 
That's a big fucking bow, dude. Get a big old bow. Doing some carving. How sharp is that knife? Because these are rocks, I think. God damn. Are they wood? Oh no, th this is all wood, isn't it? He's making wood carvings, I think. Like these guys. The very good carving. Head carved with of arch trees by Go. Yep, here we go. In his imprisonment. Go imparts an emotion to each and every complement uh, completed carving, which helps him achieve personal enlightenment. When a head is disturbed, it speaks, reflecting the emotion conferred to it. This hat is very good. Have another look. Does it not appear quite jovial? Not really. I honestly can't make out what the fuck the emotion of that thing is. It looks like... It looks like a sea urchin. The head says, I'm sorry. Have another look. Isn't that expression of atonement? Very good. I'm complimenting your skills. Do they speak in his voice too? Mm, a visitor have we. Thou must be the one who freed Artorius. An old friend he was. Thanks to thee, he left this world with honor intact. And here I am, retired and blind. Of little help to thee, I'm afraid. Hello! Thank you! Hey, large tide knight. Not always easy to find. If thou seeketh to explore this domain, be wary of a black dragon. I fear thee no match for this terrible beast. Hmm. There's very little to be said. Who good is a dog with no hands to hunt? But I'm lucky to be alive, I suppose. Hmm. Farewell, human. Lead thy life as thou seest fit. What good is a what good is a dog with no hairs to hunt? Why don't you why don't you hunt that dragon? 